Hello everyone! The Marvel vs. Capcom series is one of the most famous fighting games alongside Street Fighter and Smash Bros. But a few years ago Capcom lost the license to make new Marvel games, or even make new content for already existing ones, like making new DLC for Marvel vs. Capcom 3. So the hope for a new game was really dark. This past December in the PlayStation experience, some really good news happens, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. And I felt like this. So, when a new game of this kind comes out, there's always a big question. Who's gonna be in it? Who's not gonna be in it? Well, another developer, so we can always speculate. Now, let's cut to the point. Here it is, my Marvel vs Capcom Infinite character wishlist from the Capcom side. But I'm not making rules like one character per franchise, cause there's a lot of secondary characters that shine a lot by themselves, so I'm taking two or three characters, that is, if the game has them to begin with. Also, characters that haven't been in the previous games, returning characters will be for another time. Just games that I have played it. Also, keep in mind that the order in which I talk about them doesn't affect me wanting in the game. So, let's get started. Regina from Dino Crisis. Yeah, I know the game is just like Resident Evil, with dinosaurs. The only difference is that Regina is... a woman. Yeah, I'm a sucker for women as main characters. Regina could easily be a combination of Chris and Jill in certain aspects. To Chris, for using normal weapons like handguns and shotguns, and many different types of firearms, big and small, even melee weapons. To Jill, would be to summon different types of dinosaurs. Edward Falcon and Rouge or Wang Tang. Power Stone once a- ah, the base of the point is, she would be an awesome character to see in action once again. If you're looking for the joke character, look no further than this. Second wiki are a pair of pirates that are looking for the greatest treasure in the world. Yeah, relate that with whatever you want. The game they come from is a point and click puzzle game. So you may think, what can a point and click game character do in a fighting game? Well, many things. Thanks to wiki's magic powers, Zack can access to many items that can help him in the fight, from a saw blade made from a centipede, a bomb made from a frog, a drill made from a mold. I can go on and on, you know. To not spoil the game for those that would like to give it a shot after this, one of his ultimate attacks would be calling a pirate ship and throwing its anchors. I really think this chocolate bar loving midget would be a good choice. Gingira from EX Troopers. Do you know EX Troopers? No? I don't blame you. EX Troopers is a spin off from the Lost Planet series, developed for the PS3 and the 3DS, with a more lively manga like style that really makes it look very good, to be honest. It is a piloted robot that is not like it's too big, barely as tall as Nemesis from the previous game. Armed with energy cannons and homing energy discs, even energy beams and a freaking spirit bomb. I mean, just look at that with one hand. It is the better definition of deafness. Something that really sells me to this guy even more is his voice actor. Takehito Koyasu, better known for his voice acting as Aokiji from One Piece, Jin Dojima from Shokugeki no Soma, and you guessed it, Dio. Heck, he even has his own Dio moments in here. So giving an opportunity to this guy would really make Captain Final bring that game outside of Japan.
Jin from God Hand is a really interesting character. He's like a character from Feast of the North Star walking out of his world and spend some weekends kicking asses with Dante. So why should Jin be in the game? The base gimmick of God Hand was the roulette system, where Jin can perform a variety of moves, from simple ones like a flurry of punches or kicks and charged tackles, to shockwaves and freaking explosions. So all of his moves can be applied to a fighting game. Not only that, but the music within the game is really good. So hearing it in a fighting game would be really cool. All in all, Jin can be a good add to the game, and who knows, maybe he can be a god tier. Okay, moving on. This Wild West based ass kicker is one of the better choices for NBC, so I think seeing him announce it won't be a surprise. I hope. Maximo is the main protagonist of Maximo Goes to Glory and Maximo vs Army of Sin, a spin-off from the Ghost and Goblin series. So you may think that Maximo is just like Sir Arthur. Well, that's wrong. Unlike Arthur, Maximo only has his sword and shield and a hammer, so he is pretty limited with his arsenal. But unlike him, he is more versatile and has some attacks that Arthur doesn't have, like a fire spin attack with the sword, an ice wave with the hammer, to name a few even throwing the shield like Captain America saw. In the first game, the golden armor granted Maximo invincibility for 20 seconds, but in a fighting game that is just bullshit. So how about granting him super armor? You know, not getting knocked back from receiving damage and just deliver the pain. Also, in the second game, Maximo could summon none other than the Grim Reaper himself. So why not do that in the game as well? Calling Grim to deliver a devastating attack. I know Maximo is in a replacement to Sir Arthur, but another character from the franchise, I think it's a good choice. The Mega Man series has finally received the love they deserve in this game. Not that the previous game didn't got some with Trombone and Zero, and I hope they do come back. But they are not Mega Man. People want more, and I don't blame them. But I can only face palm when people can only think about wanting Protoman and Dr. Wily. Seriously? Is that as far as your imagination can go? A ballet swap on Mega Man and a mad doctor that doesn't even fight just uses other robots to make his beating? Come on, you can do better. Base is, without the shadow of a doubt, the best choice for a new Mega Man character in NBC. His theme, his attitude, even his travel boost, the special weapons from Mega Man and Base, and moves from the power fighters like his charge shot and his somersault are so good to not be looked out for. Like changing into his travel boost and doing all the attacks he performs in Mega Man 8, this is a chance that's really good to be ignored. I would be really disappointed if he wasn't given an opportunity. Mega Man is performing double duty in this list. You may call it cheap, but it's my video, and I don't care. I love Mega Man, and he is awesome, so fuck it. Another character that could be used in one of the most mysterious of the Mega Man series. I'm referring to Duo. This PV giant hand robot could also be a good choice. He is basically a really agile tank, capable of transforming into a mirror and going insane with it. His explosion inducing fist in the ground, a shoulder tackle, even a strange charge shot in the power fighter even a devastating uppercut. I don't see why not he can be included, but yeah, base or duo can be a real new Mega Man intrusion here. Also, he's deeming pretty badass. Even an alternate skin could be his original design.
the Dark Stalker series is always well represented in NBC. Morrigan, Felicia, Sienko, even Anakaris and Bibi Hood were in NBC too. But I think that still needs a little bit of manliness in here. John Tal Bain, Dimitri Maximov, or Donovan Bain, each of these characters has different types of appeal to everyone. A martial arts master werewolf, John is the very definition of a fast character. The way he fights, the use of nunchucks to deliver fast hits, rushing at the enemies from all directions, what are there is not to love. And you know what? His double image is just like Zero Shogun, and I love it. Dimitri This beefy vampire was the original protagonist of the Dark Star series, but he was replaced with the fan service. And I'm not going to complain about it. The use of bats with elemental attributes, transforming to a swarm of bats that pass through you, the typical fireball, using his cape as a drill, and many other things are really cool. That and a new compilation of Midnight Bliss tempts me to root for him. Donovan Bane is a monster hunter. No pun intended, I swear. His movement is pretty unique, like the use of elemental spirit to deal major damage, magical sword that he serves in for some reason, and controls at a distance. Not only that, but his dialogues with his opponents could be gold, the supernatural beings from Kakon on Marmot's side, or Demon Hunter Dante. Well, as much as I love all of them, I'm more inclined towards John, cause who doesn't want to see a werewolf Bruce Lee kicking some ass? Yukimura Sanada, Date Masamune, or Oda Nobunaga from Sengoku Basara. A Dynasty Warriors-like game, this series really deserves a spot in the light outside of Japan. I mean, what is not to lie to be a one-man army, tearing apart thousands of thousands of enemies? Now, let's see what can these guys give to be here. Yukimura uses two spears and is a character that's all attack and no defense. He is pretty unique in that regard, by using spears he is somewhat a middle range fighter, and the different attacks to his plays are pretty cool. Fire element also helps. Date is kind of a weird character to include, since he fights like Wolverine, with blinding powers, but he will not be a clone, I can assure you that. Kinda odd, but that doesn't change the fact that he's really cool, I mean using six swords is kind of overkill for whoever is in front of that, don't you think? That and his team is really badass. Nobunaga is a really good villain, a blast to play with, though I don't understand how he can attack with escape. Anyway, he dual wields with a curved sword and a shotgun, pretty much like Cervantes from Soul Calibur. Looks really good. That and his dark powers make him look so imposing, a really good choice if they want to include villains in the game. As I said before, bringing one of these characters in the game would show off the series and maybe we can get a new game in this side of the world. Just like John Salvain, I'm cheering more for Yukimura, just for the sheer uniqueness of his gameplay. But if either one of them gets in the game, that will be awesome. Batsu and Akira from Rival Schools for those who don't know, Rival Schools is a fighting game series that really took good use of the 3D, being one year younger than the first Street Fighter EX. Taking the Japanese school archetypes, you know, the hot-blooded main protagonist, the childhood friends, the mysterious masked guy that turns out to be a girl, yeah, cliches. This also makes me think, how on earth are all students, even teachers, fighters? Meh, game logic, you can't reason with it. Batsu is the main character of the game, he has the fireball, typical of all these main characters. But that's it, Batsu is pretty awesome with a fire uppercut and a mirror diving kick. He can do pretty well in this game. Also, his hot-blooded yet innocent personality would give a good and hilarious dialogue to his opponents. As for Akira, a practitioner of mixed martial arts and a well-balanced fighter, she is by no means a bad character. She even has her own energy blast. Her Tai Chi way of fighting is kinda cool looking. Correct me if I'm wrong on that one. Her outfit is that of a biker with a school motif. I wonder how she would react facing Ghost Rider. One of the core gimmicks of Rival Schools was the use of a companion to perform a team attack. 
If this doesn't make a chance for these characters to be included now that the game is a 2 on 2 fight, I don't see what else can make it. The combinations are limitless, and yes, I know that Batsu has been in Tatsunoko vs Capcom. Edward Falcon and Rouge or Wangtang. Power Stone once again is one of the forgotten treasures from Capcom, a party slash fighting game that consisted in looking for jewels with incredible powers. You see where this is going? They were scattered in the field and once you got three, you change it into a super form to deliver some badass looking moves. Edward turned it into some kind of airplane robot which fires missiles in one or multiple directions, a fire uppercut can style, and controllable dash attack. Rouge into a fire genie with flame powers and a hilarious raging demon like attack. And one tank? Well, let's just say he is a homage to a certain super warrior race. So, since NBC Infinite will have a story mode and the Infinity Stones are heavily involved, this is really a good chance to evolve them here. And yes, I know this is Ryoma's theme that I don't give a The Street Fighter series cannot stay without its newcomers, something that was shown with Viper and NBC3. And although I would love to see Laura here, mm -hmm. my choices for this time will be the fan favorites Rashid or Nekali. Nekali is a pure physical character with good speed and very interesting attacks, and his theme is one of the most intimidating in the series, period. His animalistic way of fighting is pretty rare among the Capcom characters. That and his betrigger is fantastic as a super attack. I really find it hard to ignore using his claws to rip his opponent. The stumps, he is so violent, and I love it. As for Rashid, he is a really good character by himself, always positive and looking for a good challenge. So how about challenging these kind of opponents, huh? His win attacks are really unique in terms of elemental affinity in the Capcom side as well. Even in the main series, I never seen a win user before, and I mean the element itself, Sonic Boom for the like doesn't count. Not only that, but who doesn't want to go? If Laura gets in the game, I won't complain. The Hunter from Monster Hunter. In the previous game, no representation of the series was included, saying that because the main character is customizable, makes him impossible to represent. To that, I say bullshit. He can easily be put with the basic design. As for personality, basically too, a brave hunter looking for powerful monsters to defeat. There, the design is so varied, they can go heavy or light, male or female, detailed or simple. Also, this is a work in Arsenal taking about. Dual blades, which I recommend for his main way of fighting. More on that later. Great sword, gun lance, switch axe, charge blade, instant blade, heavy bowgun. This guy is what we will call a jack of all traders, master of none. Not only that, but he could be OP too, thanks to the hunter arts. Ground slash, sakura slash, round force, and shoryugeki. Bloodwing, heck, even Energy Blade looks like a pretty good choice for a super attack, or even Swarm as an assisted super attack, Supernova as a long distance, the possibilities are endless with this guy. I really hope he or she is included. There was a fake leak not long ago, it's craving Rathalos to be in it, but um, giant characters are so bad. I know they hit hard and all, but they are so slow and just have a big ass hit me in the face. Maybe that's why they don't choose them too much in Taxonautico vs Capcom. The game has a story mode, so maybe as a mid boss? To finish up this guy, I really wish the Monster Hunter gets a good representative in this game. Also, I don't like Palico as a player character. We have Rocket for that already. Remember what I said about the Sword and Shield?
Leo. This fusion between Conan the Barbarian and Aslan is one of the four main characters from the arcade Red Earth. He's a really basic character to begin with in the game. For his appearance, you may think that this guy is another physical character. Well, that's half wrong. In the game, you could get elemental magic orbs that, when activated, allow it to execute magic-based attacks like fire waves, ice spikes, tornadoes, even meteor rays. Besides, I would love to hear a new remaster of this thing. I know people would like Tessa for her magic powers, but with the confirmation of returning Doctor Strange, Magic vs. Magic Rivalry is kind of meh. So I think this badass Lion Man deserves a new chance to show the brawn over the brain. Also, this may help to bring the series back. Or at least to the PSN, who knows. Sick Warhead from Chaos Legion. Warhead? Warhead? Hmm, German. I'm really wondering why this guy wasn't included in the previous game actually. Oh well, Sig is a really versatile swordsman, not like Dante, but a little. Along Sig goes the Chaos Legion, entities with the diverse abilities from cross lashing your enemies, a vaginate wooden squadron, shield like beams, a legion that jumps core screw you from upside, even a counter attack legion. Not only that, but there's also the ultimate legion, Thanatos. Both adult and perfect form are so badass. Now, if we could see this guy in this game, his moves could be pretty awesome and seeing the legionaries in the current generation of graphics sounds pretty tempting, especially Thanatos. Also, a game with the dialogues would be really goddamn cool, especially with Dante. You know, demon hunters. Along with Doctor Strange and other supernatural beings in the game, even reacting to technological advanced beings. So good. Ryu from Breath of Fire. This series was so famous back in the day, capable of competing against Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest, until the 4 game. I know there's a lot of versions of Ryu, so let's be more specific. Breath of Fire 3 or Breath of Fire 4. 1 and 2 are okay, Breath of Fire 5 can go fuck itself. Ryu was going to be included in the previous game, according to rumors, but was rejected in the end. The reason? that he will be confusing with the Street Fighter's Ryu. Seriously? Would you confuse this guy with this guy? That's a pathetic excuse that I don't believe even to this day. Ryu's way of fighting would be pretty unique, using not only his sword and magic attacks, but of course, his signature dragon powers, like the elemental fire, thunder, ice breath. But along come other types of attacks, a falling meteor, a big fire wave. In Breath of Fire 4 case, the majority of the dragons are treated as summons, but, thanks to that, they are more varied, from a water cannon, a mud wave, a dragon that blanches you far in the distance, killing ones. We can omit that one. Something that these two Ryu share is a special form called Warrior, that turns him into a half-human, half-dragon being, and attacking with aura breath, a shockwave Dragon Ball style in Breath of Fire 3, or in 4, the aura smash, a single dive or dash attack, the animation doesn't sound too much also, there's the ultimate attacks in 4 that calvin more towards him, like Giga Breath and Kaiser Breath. So awesome. I hope that we can see a bit of Dragon Blood infusion in the game. Samanosuke Akechi from Onimusha, a really well-loved series that we're dying to see return. 
Armed with his trusty katana and a bow, Samanosuke is a samurai with various elemental powers, fire, wind, and lightning. Not only that, but in the third game he got to learn to dual wield and even use an axe, so it's not like he is underhanded. He can even turn into an Oni himself. Not that one. There we go. I know Soki from Onimusha Down of Dreams is more imposing. I mean, look at that. But the technicalities win here. And yes, I know Soki wasn't Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, but Samanosuke wins me over since his story is longer and compelling to me. But if they include Soki instead, I won't complain. So we're finally here. These are the final characters I wanted to talk about, and by process of elimination, let's get on with it. Asura and Yasha from Asura's Wrath. This game was created a few years ago in what I like to call the Capcom fucking it up era. You know, abundance of stupid DLC, the like that almost made Capcom go bankrupt. But something really good came up out of this. This overly epic game slash anime with a badass character. Asura is a demigod, the answer to Hulk to be honest. He is one if not the most epic character I've seen in my life. Energy balls, sprouting extra arms, energy blasts, losing his arm and still fighting. Heck, even his counter attacks are some of the most epic badass things I've seen in my life. And I've seen Bayonetta and Dante. Also, Blast met with his punches. I don't know how those works, but still epic. There's nothing this guy has that isn't badass. Okay, moving on. Yasha is to Ashura what Virgil is to Dante. In difference to Ashura's savage way of fighting, Yasha's movements are elegant, like the wind. Ok, let's get this out of the way, I want to hear a new remix of Wind Fang. While Ashura focuses on his arms, Yasha uses both his arms and legs. Also, his energy manifestations look more like waves than blasts. Nice touch there. The hype that these characters could bring up to people is a lot more than they already are. The remains of an era that almost destroyed our trust in this company left a little ray of hope that thanks to it we are enjoying it after many years. So in the end, Ashura is more than welcome in the game. I really want to see at least two or three characters that I've spoken about here. As many could have guessed, I omitted a certain character, yes, Sigma himself. I really believe that the final boss here is Ultron Sigma, so I guess we will get that character instead. So ending this, I'm just saying thanks for watching, tune in next time for my wishlist for returning characters from both sides, don't forget to like, comment and or subscribe, once again thank you and good night.